Oh, finally. Sit down and relax. Yeah, huh? Another great day, baby. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so wonderful. Yeah, nice. Wow. Hear the frogs? Yeah. Wait. Do you hear that? Somebody's coming. Yeah. They found us. Once again, they found us. Let's go. Run. We're out of here. We're out of here. Hurry. Can you get it? Oh, my God. I can't. Can, it's oh, kind of, oh, get it. Oh, get it. Oh. Okay. Uh, hurry. Go. 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 They're coming. They're coming. Hurry. Hurry. Let's go. Get in there. Gosh. They're coming, they're coming, come on. All right, let's pretend like we're not here. Quick, shut out the lights. The lights, the lights. <sighs> okay, shh, be really quiet. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think they saw us. Oh! <laughs> hey everybody. I'm Sue. I'm Bob. <laughs> and has that happened to you where you feel like you need to hide? <laughs> but we're at Good Times RV and we're going to say Mama doesn't like any drama. <laughs> Neither does Daddy. So let's talk about all those things. So we've made a list of some of the frequently asked questions and then we're going to go through those. <laughs> Okay, so we've made a list of all the things that we find are important to, to work camping. And first and foremost, there are many circumstances that people find themselves in a work camping position at the moment. Life, uh, the high cost of, of everything in the world right now. So there's two types of work camping positions. You can be a volunteer, which you are trading your site for the time that you give. And we'll talk about that in a minute, how you make sure that that's an equal trade for both of you, the employer and the work camper. And do remember when you're a volunteer, you're not an employee. That's right. Exclamation point. That's right. <laughs> So, and then there's paid positions because there are many people who have to earn a living while they are in the process of either work camping, finding their way, whatever it is that you're doing. So if you have to earn a wage, do know that most campgrounds do not pay more than the minimum. So That's right. always find out with your state what the minimum wage is. And then that will be part of the equation on how you value the site. All right. That's right. So let's talk about that. Let's do the math. So I'm going to do simple math because off the top of my head, it's just way easier. <laughs> All right. So in your, in the campground that you're volunteering to make sure it's equitable for both you and the campground, you'll use a mathematical equation. First, you must know what the cost of the site is monthly. I'm gonna say $800 a month. And then, what is the minimum wage in that area? $10 an hour? That's generous. A lot of Southern states are a lot less than that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, and then the hours that they require for you to work, say 20. So you will times 20 times $10 an hour and then times again, once you get that answer, by four and that'll be your monthly requirement. Yep. So it comes out to uh, 80 hours a month. 
And yeah. it's 20 hours a week. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's always questioning my math because I do the, <laughs> the new old math. <laughs> so to make sure it's equitable, and I'll put the, the uh, math on the screen here so that you can see it, how we do it. All right. So once you decide that it's an equitable situation, then the next step is you must have what, Bob? Uh, let's see. He's reading my notes. Oh my gosh. And my fancy handwriting. Oh, do the math. Uh, cost and expense, and cost of site and wages, then making an agreement with, so, the, with the employer or the campground. Now, some will have you fill out an agreement and it'll be things, for instance, uh, can you lift 25 pounds regularly for your six hour shift? Uh, do you handle stressful situations well? Can you snake a toilet? Can you pick up trash? Um, it'll have all of those descriptives that are going to make you decide whether you want to do that job or not. If yeah. toilets are out of the question for you, then that agreement is not doable. Yeah, you can negotiate that. Everything's negotiable. That's right. So if you get an employer that says this and this and this is the required mandatory and there is no exception, then you have to take it on face value if there is no exception. For instance, as an example, I don't get on ladders. So I tell them up front I don't get on ladders for any reason. And I've never been told, well, you have to. I've always been told that's not a problem. No problem at all. So uh, you can negotiate anything you want to. Yeah. And we like yeah. we, we like to do that because sometimes um, they don't realize that most of the volunteers are 60-plus years old. Mm -hmm. Or if yeah. they do... They don't have enough hired help to do the heavy lifting, so they try and get younger, more physical people in, which yeah. at that point they should just hire an employee. Yeah, we've been in campgrounds where they've got work campers that were, their agreement was to pick up trash and patrol the campground and open the facilities, that type of thing. The next thing you know, they're, they're digging ditches, they're laying irrigation pipe, they're building cabins, they're uh, doing all kinds of things and way over the hours of what they agreed to. So if you work more hours thinking that the park's going to be better, it's not. You can't make the park better, you alone. And if you work more hours, that means that you can't stick by an agreement. Yes. So and you devalue. You devalue yourself. Yourself. Right. So yeah. instead of working for that $10 an hour, which is the minimum wage, the more hours you do, the less you're working for. That's right. So if, say, you say, I'm bored and I want something to do, so I'm just going to go do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and you put another 10 hours or another 20 hours on top of what you're already doing, then you're working for $4 an hour yeah. or $2, $2 an hour, an hour depending yeah. on how much you're willing yeah. to do. And the sacrifice there is that now employers think that they can raise the hours and some do expect harder jobs for the rest of the group. That's right. So let's talk about what happens if your employer changes the game on you mid stay. For instance, you're hired to work in the office and they want you roofing a building or yeah. digging ditches. Yeah. Well, that's totally, a, a, in my opinion, what we used to call it is bait and switch. Yeah. So if they're doing that, you have every expectation that there should have been a conversation prior to that change. No. You should then agree to the new terms because they are setting a new standard if, for you. If you want the new terms, uh, if you can't do it, I mean, I'm 69 years old. I'm not getting on a roof to roof for no. a building. I, and I'm not going to do it either. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have a problem with heights, but I'm not doing it as a volunteer because as a volunteer, you have no safety net like workman's comp. Right. So if you injure yourself or 
you blow out a knee or you suffer heat stroke or any of those things, yeah. that's on your dime. The same is true for most 1099 jobs, which is an independent contractor yeah. as seen by the IRS. So if you're on a 1099, you have no protections at all for the job, for your health, for anything. So something to keep in mind. So do, do uh, think it through. It's like, several times we've wanted to go do Christmas trees, but the physical demand on Christmas tree sales, I don't, oh, yeah. I don't think we could handle it. Yeah, you have to unload the truck. You got to handle the trees and there'll be hundreds of them. Yeah. You have to uh, use a chainsaw, cut off the end of them. That's not a big deal. No, we like that part. But, uh, <laughs> and nail on the base and and then carry it to people's cars and there's a lot of work and that's usually a 12 to 14 hour a day job yeah so if you want to work that hard that's fine but i didn't retire to work that hard so right <laughs> so um the next category is going to be once you've had a meeting of the minds and you've agreed to the terms if you do not sign anything it is a good idea to record the conversation or at least take notes and make a highlight. Yeah. Um, we haven't had a situation yet where we agreed to something over the phone and then, then they've changed it, but that does happen. So be prepared to stick up for yourself and defend yourself and always keep enough finances in the kitty that if you need to go, you can and yeah. it's not going to be a hardship yeah they they put wheels on these things for a reason yeah. so, <laughs> and you have to go then go roll on baby <laughs> roll on oh that's right i forgot <laughs> i digress okay so now um once you show up what can you expect two things um first you want to make sure you arrive on time and stay in communication with them if you make a deal to work camp in their park in January and you're not showing up till April or May or June even, <laughs> make sure that you keep in contact with them so they don't, one, forget about you, and two, that if anything changes along the way, you still have time to make adjustments. Yeah. You don't want any surprises. I mean, well... Well, and they don't either. For instance... Yeah. Uh, when they interview you, they'll ask you, what kind of rig do you have? A fifth wheel, a travel trailer, a motorhome? And we've seen people that said in the interview, I have a motorhome, a Class A motorhome. When in reality, they show up in a school bus. So And nothing against nothing schoolies. Wrong, nothing wrong with that. But some parts. Just tell them that this yeah, is what I have. Just be honest. Yeah. If you're honest, you don't have to try and remember your lies. Right. So <laughs> it's a whole lot easier just to speak the truth and act the truth than it is to try and That's be right. something that you're not or, or fib just to get the job. <laughs> and really that doesn't work in, in the long run anyway. So as soon as you arrive, if you find out your accommodations or anything is not as you expected, because you should ask where the work campers are parked. Yes. Sometimes you're right up against the dumpsters or you're in the, the, the valley or the lowland that floods all the time. So your lot's always wet or just an undesirable location. My question is normally, are the work campers dispersed throughout the campground or do you have a separate, separate work camping area? And that kind of gives me an idea. We do ask how big are the sites because we're 42 feet long with five slides. Yeah. So if, if it's going to be tight, we need to know that. That's right. Also, yeah. um, be honest when you communicate as soon as you get there. Um, communication is kind of the, the cornerstone of making all this happen. If That's you right. can't vocalize your needs, wants, desires, or expectations, then you're going to have a hard time getting exactly what you want. And good management wants to communicate with you. They yeah, because uh, they appreciate their sure, volunteers. Yeah. They know that it's being it's presented as a value to the park. Yeah. It's less people that they have to hire or put on the payroll, which feeds their bottom line essentially. 
-hmm. So, and That's we were right. business owners, so we're all about making money and everybody has the right to do that. Okay. Yeah, but sure. protect yourself. Yeah. Because that's the smart thing to do. That's right. Okay. So uh, learning your job. So when you get your job, they will tell you when to show up. They'll tell you how long you're going to be there. And somebody should be there to instruct you. That's right. Even if you already know the job, you should have at least uh, several hours of training on how they want their trash picked up, where they want it put, um, how to answer the phone or use the computer system. Yep. How to housekeep. Or uh, house housekeeping, yep. um, different places require different things. So yep. make sure that you get some training. If you get none, then you need to ask. Yeah. You need to insist that they do something to teach you exactly what their expectations are. Yep. Otherwise, you will always fall short of their expectations. That's right. Yep. All right. And if you are not certified in electric or plumbing and if you're a tradesman i i would caution you in being a work camper because as a tradesman they could take advantage of you and your you, labor is valuable when it's you're a very, tradesman when you're an electrician or a plumber your labor is valuable it's very valuable so, so make sure that if you're not skilled in those areas one you don't attempt it even yeah. if you think you're a good handyman remember you put yourself at risk for mm -hmm. anything that you do that's outside of the parameter of what you've agreed to do. So, and if you, if you have a quality trade and it's something you're proud of and you'd like to share it, I would negotiate a separate deal because otherwise yeah. you're going to be digging trenches and laying You can negotiate <laughs> some, some pay for that. You know. And that, and Nothing a lot of managers are very willing to sure. pay for expertise. Because if they don't pay you, they got to pay the guy down the street and he's going to charge a service call yeah, plus so right. much an hour. Yeah. And you could estimate the job at one price, perform the whole job, yeah. and then they're going to be as satisfied. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So the rules of social contact, conduct, drama. Oh, oh no. No, no, no. We're not doing drama. We've only been in a couple places that had that, but when it has it, it it is a cancer and a poison yeah. to the whole work to the rest of the work campers. Yeah, and it it wears everybody out and mm -hmm. tears everybody down. Yeah. So what do I mean by drama? I mean people who talk about everyone else and share their entire life history with you in the first 10 minutes that you get there. That's right. And I'm sorry, but I don't need to know that much about you yet. <laughs> or at Give, all, ever. Or at all. I mean, I was always raised that you don't ask anybody how much money they make or how much they spend or right. any of that. Yeah. Those are not questions that you ask. And in this world today, and as adults, all grown up, we've forgotten what it's like to make friends. How do you make friends? Right? So you start by friendly greeting, uh, making good eye contact, remembering their name. Most of the time is the hardest part. So remember their name, make good eye contact, shake their hand, have something nice to say. Oh, like I love your shirt or... I don't know. Your <laughs> earrings are pretty. <laughs> whatever, whatever starts that conversation. And remember, most people like people who are like them. Yeah. So if they're exhibiting some traits that you don't like from the get go, then chances are you may not be the perfect match for best friends, but you will not be friends with every single person in that campground. Every right. now and then, you hit it off, and there's oh, yeah. another couple that... You'll make a lifelong friend. Lifelong friend. Yeah. And they're a joy to be around. You have similar interests in common. You have similar goals and expectations as well. Yeah. So, and that's valuable in the world of work camping. Yeah. And... The other thing I might add, work camping is, is a lot about travel. So if you're looking for a park to just become a permanent resident, a squatter, I don't know, 
there's terms for it, I guess. Um, rethink work camp because um, if you're if you're there too long, you become stale. Your work becomes stale. It becomes ineffective. You get complacent, um, and you expect favor. So I would suggest the parks when people show up to work camp, also give them their end date, whether it's three months or six months out. Give them their end date and time they have to be out. And that way it gives you time to get fresh blood in mm -hmm. and it gives your work campers, uh, puts them in a position where they have to move on to a new experience. Yes. And that's good for everybody. That is really good for everybody. Yeah. Personally, we like three to four month um, yeah. adventures. At the most. Yeah. At the most. And we don't work camp every single month, mm -hmm. but um, you can. Yeah. But sure. A lot of times we'll do three months and then take three months off somewhere and then we'll yeah. go work four months for somebody and then take three months off yeah. or take a month and a half to travel from one destination to the other. Yeah. Still enjoying all the benefits of being work campers That's right. and traveling and seeing some of the most beautiful things in this country. Yeah. So let's recap so that we can shut her down. So no drama. Don't tell everybody everything you need to know. Make sure you have an agreement. Make sure you understand what's required of you. Make sure it's a value. Um, don't put yourself at risk. Don't do any more than you should. That's right. Or what you've agreed upon. Right. Um, and life's short. Enjoy yourself. Make friends, go to happy hour, even if you don't drink, expose yourself to other people, learn and, and develop the finesse to make friends and enjoy the people that you're working around. Yeah, exactly. So no drama. <laughs> if you're drama, we're out of here. Yeah, that's right. Because we have wheels and we will roll. And that's yeah, that, the motto you should use. There's nothing also. worse than when somebody comes into your site, another work camper, and says, oh boy, you're not going to believe what's going on now. Guess what that's I the, heard. That's the last thing. And <laughs> then wants, talks about every single person in there. Who wants to hear that? that? Nobody wants Nobody to hear it. Nobody does. Yeah. So. All right. So, yeah. Keep that to yourself. <laughs> keep it to yourself. And you got wheels. Roll on, mama. Roll on down the road. Wait. That's two different songs. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. All right, everybody. We love you. Have a bell. great day. Oh, <laughs> thumbs up. Hey, Foxy. Hey, Daisy. Hey, Foxy. Hey, Daisy. <laughs> and baby girl and hubby. <laughs> yeah. Throw you all in there. That's right. But we will be talking to you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>